So um, another topic, uh, moving on to another vertical uh, love of ours is Cerner and the healthcare business. We were recently announced as um, their, you know, innovator partner of the year. I'd love to just hear your thoughts on our relationship. I think it was the Accelerate Partner of the Year. Accelerate Partner of the Year. Sorry, I'm new. Um, but the uh, what, what do you think about that relationship, where it's going, and what you're seeing from from the, the customer base that Cerner has? Sure. I mean, Cerner's been a great partner of ours for several years. I think it's now going on five years. And uh, with Cerner, we've been able to embed our technology into their Millennium Healthcare IT platform. And so they're delivering uh, modern era, full stack clinical systems to hospitals, large and small, from the largest networks of hospitals, big conglomerates, all the way down to the very small hospitals that are local. And uh, they're able to do so because they have a very, very powerful and flexible and comprehensive technology for handling the types of processes and systems and data that you find in these hospitals. Our system is part of that. Our capability to audit all the key transactions that are happening in those systems is Sensage technology. They, they refer to it as P2 Sentinel. And um, in particular with HIPAA and high tech, there, is, uh, there now has been a long-standing requirement with increased teeth now with the high tech developments um, to be able to audit all access to clinical data that is particular to you or me, you know, our personal information, right? So there's a meaningful use requirement that anyone who's looking at that data has to have put it to meaningful use. Um, there are, there's a move towards digitizing all this data because there's an efficiency there, but at the same time, we have to bring these protections in to make sure that we know who's accessing the data, etc. And so with Cerner, we've been able to, um, I believe we have over 100 customers together now, um, delivering this sort of technology as part of the Millennium platform. And we're not stopping there. We're now bringing this technology to smaller hospitals via multi-tenant SaaS implementations of our technology. So uh, we've announced that uh, in the past, Cerner has a, a version of our technology that can support multiple hospitals on the same technology while keeping that data separate. And then, of course, allowing those hospitals to avoid the capital expenditure necessary to implement their own system nice. on a premise. So we love, um, we love the work that we do with Cerner. It brings our technology into a vertical domain, which frankly increases the value. If you can have the compliance stuff handled within the context of your vertical domain, it's really, really powerful. It saves them time and money at, at, on the end user side. Uh, it allows them to respond to compliance requirements in a way that's more efficient. And of course, all this is delivered by Cerner, our partner, uh, merely with our support. And they, they really handle that, uh, those relationships directly on their own, which is, which is fantastic for us. And so when you think about the open security intelligence movement and the work that's being done there, do you see that sort of translating into vertical best practices, vertical dashboarding, vertical reports that, you know, Cerner and others could could sort of take the lead on? Absolutely. I mean, this all got started where Cerner and SenseAge collaborated on a healthcare analytics package, which they include in our joint product. Um, and we will iterate that over time. And I think with the open security intelligence community, we will see horizontal security analytics that are applicable to all scenarios, typical infrastructure monitoring and user access uh, events and um, identity and, and privilege authority, things like that. But there also will be pertinent things in each vertical domain. And healthcare is one that's very, very active because of the compliance you know, requirements that they have. Um, for example, there's a, a known use case in the healthcare arena called you know, VIP access. Anytime a celebrity is in the hospital, as you might imagine, there's more interest than normal in who's that celebrity in that bed. And yeah, can I get access to that person's information, etc. So there's a whole procedure that is that is um, followed by by hospitals in, in order to have extra care in protecting that sort of information, just because they know there's a higher risk. Right. Um, as we evolve, I think the ability for us to take this open dialogue into a vertical context makes it that much more powerful. Mm -hmm. And the other vision that we have for this whole open security intelligence community is that by having an exchange, by having a collaboration, we make the industry more efficient. Therefore, we bring more advanced solutions that many have a chance to influence and evolve to those end users that have less staff, less security staff. And that's classic in the healthcare arena, right? That's why people like, you know, Cerner exists and SenseAge exists in that particular domain to help those folks that don't have 
uh, the sort of IT and security resources that they need. The community will help advance the solution that uh, organizations like those in the healthcare industry will be able to adopt and leverage. Love it. And so what about, let's say, finance or telco? How do you see that also playing in, in those industries? Let, let's take telco as an example. Uh, telco is another pattern we see where we uh, help a lot of telcos in, in Europe in particular deal with their CDR retention and retrieval requirements. There's compliance regs in the EU that have driven that. Um, that's giving way to other forms of internal security and log management where these telcos, now that they have this infrastructure in place for a compliance purpose, sound familiar? They want to utilize it for other things including internal security. So there's a pattern there as well and of course you get different data sets, data types. I can tell you the kind of queries that are, are have to be fired off in support of law enforcement investigations of cyber terrorists and cyber criminals they're, they're immense. I mean, what did this person call during that time of the day, and who did those people call? And, and it does and their billing information match? Absolutely. Yeah, and so yeah. we have we have thousand line queries that are being written by some of these customers, mm -hmm. and it's just because they have to get at that data to help law enforcement investigate these criminals. We're now seeing legislation in the U.S. that is for the first time might drive some retention of data in the U.S. And this this is in the case of retaining IP addresses that were allocated on a dynamic basis to individuals that have, that have um, subscriptions to a, like a service um, for purposes of potentially investigating child pornography, child exploitation scenarios. So that's a lightning rod issue in the U.S. That's enabled legislation to get further along than others have given some of our concerns about privacy. But that's an example of how I think a very legitimate use of well-controlled and, and only under subpoena or properly documented requirements uh, we can have data that then can be helpful in sort of supporting those investigations. And, and no matter what, if it goes through, you still have to store, you know, 18 to 24 months of data, wh whether it's properly used or not, that's going to be a big data problem. That's right. And so that what it does, it does create opportunity for us, but I think also has a nice payoff, you know, in terms of industry value and, and benefit, uh, particularly for law enforcement. And this is just an example of how, as the digital universe has continued to evolve, the whole globe's uh, ability to keep up from a from a law enforcement and justice standpoint has been has been challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of progress, a lot of developments, and we'll continue to see those. So I think these are good examples where we are breaking through in ways that allow us to leverage our existing criminal justice systems and laws that have served us very well in the physical domain. Now applying to the digital domain. Got it. Perfect.